Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to CitystreetsMe.com. We are here in the beautiful hot city of Wichita, Kansas, at the beautiful Hyatt in downtown Wichita, Kansas. We are here with St. Louis's very own Mr. Murphy Lee and Mr. Key One. What up, man? What up, peace? Appreciate you. Right on. What's up, bro? Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all sitting down with us. Welcome to the city, first of all. Appreciate it. Uh, second of all, uh, get right to business with you guys. Uh, you guys are here for. Um, we're actually on tour doing a, um, a little give back for uh, Vatterai School. We linked up with Vatterai back at home and they opened up a music school. Right on. Um, it's called EI Institute um, by Nelly and by Vatterai. And um, it's, it, it directs straight to the entertainment business. That means graphic design and engineering, production, singing, instruments, drama. theater, drama, film. You know, it's, it's linked right into that. So, I think that was our biggest way of giving back. Everybody wants to get put on, but nobody no wants to learn how to do what it does and what it does to take to get there too. So we got online courses, all ages too. Also, they got caps for kids during the summer. But if you're in high school, you can go there. It's not like a program where um, you gotta go do four years of college. You gotta do here is by hours, right? You know, and um, and you can learn a lot in ten hours. And you don't even realize. It. You know, it's kind of broke up in like two hours on um, classes. But it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. You also can do it from home. You don't have to come all the way to travel to St. Louis to do it. But if you do, it's a beautiful school. There's nothing wrong with more than that. Um, but definitely, yeah, by Nelly.com. Right on. All the information. So you, got, you guys are a part of that. So let me ask you this. I know the giving back portion of it, giving back to everybody. But, but talk to me about where did the, the passion behind the Institute start? Like where did the, the brain trust you guys sit down and said, you know what, this is what I want to do for the community? Where did it originate? Um, actually, actually, as far as the community part of it, as far as coming like to Wichita to do what we did today, um, Vatterock do give back days, um, maybe like, they do it like once a year or so, and used it just in St. Louis, so they decided to do them in, in all the states, that wherever Vatterock school is, so we just wanted to participate. It was um, a great opportunity also to, um, to to let people know about the EI school, too, all, that we that we were combining with Vatterock with, so. And as far as the EI school um, being invented, for the purposes of us getting into business and not having anybody to talk to or anybody to lean on to say, how do we do this? You know what I'm saying? Right. You had to go out and just do it by whim. You know what I'm saying? So right. now, what better than to have somebody who's, you know, we got some of the top producers working there. We got some of the top engineers that work there, you know, that the engineer don't ride with me's and dilemmas and country, you know, so forth and so on. So right. What better way to give back knowledge? Knowledge is better than a lot of things, you know. Right on. Whether you know it or not, you know what I'm saying. So that was um, it was a really no-brainer once um, Vatterod came with um, their structure meets our wants, and it came together right. So now we're trying to push and let everybody know that get some credibility. You right. Know what I'm saying before you approach people and before you ask for people for money for what you do, learn. Um, get a lot of experience in that so you can give the people what they earned for giving you the money. You know what I'm saying? Don't just ask for it just because you're there pushing the button. You know what I'm saying? Really learn and really know how to do it to make that person look like he's professional also. Right on. So, so that's peace. So when that came about, it was a no-brainer for real. Right on. So y'all y'all out here and y'all working hard. Now we got, we got a lot of aspiring artists all over the globe. It's just a, music is global. Talk to me about some of the struggles that you guys coming up in the game, you know what I'm saying, that you have encountered, you know, those days that you maybe said, you know, maybe this ain't for me, and how did you overcome those struggles? Um, not quitting. I think that's like the key thing to anything in life, you know, it ain't just music, it's just like not giving up, you know what I mean, like it takes, it takes a lot for a person to wake up and do it on their own. You know, it's kind of easy when a person make you go to school or when a person makes, when you have to go to work, you got to clock in, somebody telling you to do it. You know what I'm saying? In order to get your money, you got to clock in at nine, you got to be there by nine. Right. But it's even harder as an entrepreneur and to do this in this business to wake up and have the drive to do it yourself 24 hours because it's not no nine to five um, type of shift. And nobody you know can fire you. you know what I'm yeah, and you, you are that, you what are the sole controller and it's, that's the hard thing about it. So the key thing too is, not to give up, you know what I'm saying, not to quit. And I know everybody say that it's like the key thing, but man, as, as me personally, as a black man, anything I want to do, I don't care if I want to learn how to make these shoes right now. If I keep on trying to make these shoes, I'm going to learn how to make shoes. Like, And that's just in me. 
and it's just in all of us, you know what I'm saying, to do that. But at some point in time in, in those rocky roads, you quit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whatever takes you that way, you quit. So, And it's, it's really a double-edged sword, too, because the same time I can tell you never to quit, I can tell the other half of people that you should quit. You know what I'm saying? Like, do the math. You know what I'm saying? Don't say you're going to be a doctor and you don't like blood. You know what I'm saying? So don't look at yourself in the mirror and see if this is for you. Would you buy you? Because this is a selling situation. You can always do music in the bathtub or on the porch. This is a business. So if you're not really built for this, learn learn to see if you built for this before you waste your, your, your good years or when you could have been a doctor or you could have been this or you could have been that. If it's about your love for hip hop, hip hop is lawyer, hip hop is doctor, hip hop is what we doing right now. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is behind the camera, hip hop is light man, hip hop is directors, lawyers, health, you know what I'm saying? It's right. a lot of uh, insurance, everything. So it's not just about, if it's your love for hip hop, then be in it where it's better for you, that, you know, fill a void. Right. Because a lot of people doing what we do, you know what I'm saying? Like, if this ain't for you, figure out what's for you, that you can find your way in, you know what I'm saying? Don't just do it because that's the easy way out, you thought. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're wasting your time, your good time that you had to get that free education. You're going to pass it up trying to beep, beep, bop, beep, bop. No, no, no. Turn this into a business because this is what this is. You know right what I mean? on. So with that, with the, it being a business, I want to I ask you all this. I want you to take kick the business side out of it. Before y'all got to where you are today, tell me about when you fell in love with hip hop. What led you to, to be where you are today? Mine was the intro to Ready to Die. You know what I'm saying? Ready to Die, and it was, it was the intro when he was being born. You know what I mean? And then at the same time, we listened to that so much when it first dropped that Big Ali, that's in our group, he made us listen to Outkast's first album too. And it was just the formula of creating an album. I think that was like, that was my turning point of like, hold on. Right. This is what it is. This is for real right here. They had the skits, the everything. And when you hear them, like you heard Brooklyn. And when you heard them, you heard Atlanta. You know what I'm right. saying? And just defining yourself, I think that was like my first first straight love of wanting to do this. Now, first, as far as hip hop, I'm a music lover from Yonder. You know what I'm saying? You can go Elder Barge. Uh, uh, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, whenever the, I seen an album of my aunties and them, like, whatever album they had, from the Run DMCs to the LL to the Michael Jackson to the, you know what I'm saying, to the Prince to the Elder Boy, all that formed the, just the love of music. Right on. And for me, I'm more of a, I'm more of a personal person. So, um, it was a guy by the name of Goldie. He had, um, did a rap at Hema at the park, and everybody paid him attention, like, to a certain matter where they never did before. I was like, man, that's tight. You know what I'm saying? You just said some words and you made everybody pay attention to what you were saying. Because any other time they think he's a fool or don't pay attention to him like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, that gave me, and then being with Nelly playing around, we always played around with it. Like while we on the baseball bench or in the bus on the way to the baseball game or something, we playing around rapping and so forth and so on. So all the way back from right down crisscross words. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm writing words down so I can know I'm DJ Quick. I'm writing them down. You know what I'm saying? Changing the words around to make it fit me. Same thing, Jeezy. You know what I'm saying? Just flipping around. Like um, I'm born and raised in U City. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. Born and raised in Compton. I'm just flipping it around. And, and and that really was a little. I think it was more attention for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you you got been you been all over the world. You done you done done then lived the dream. Tell me about a moment. That you just it just everything just fell into place for you. You said, you know what, this this music this music business, this is me and I am it and I belong. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just the point of getting on, just having to go record country ground, you know, just that whole feeling of getting I ain't never been on an airplane in my life. You know, I had grocery bags, then I ain't even had no luggage, like I just <laughs> I, I had the same pair of shoes I had my senior year. And it was like, I was tired of them shoes. I looked down at my shoes and said, I'm tired of these shoes. I'm tired of these shoes. <laughs> I'm talking about all day. We had to walk 10 blocks every day to go record the album. And it was just, I think that was the point. It was like, I'm in New York City, yo. Like, straight up and down, you know what I'm saying? From Lil U City. So I think that was like my turning point. Like, all right. Because I, no, I ain't going back to nothing from here. Um, I'm a little older than him, so I see things. The time and moment, I was a different age, a different mind level. So I've seen it even earlier in that and felt it earlier. You know, just being at the club and just being at the club casino and just selling. I was making $750 a day selling CDs, bro. 
brought up. Like, I was feeling good earlier. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, they love us. I'm listening to the words that people are saying back to me after they get it. Right. You know what I'm saying? More than anybody. Like, I'm around just like really absorbing. That's how I am now. Like, I absorb what you say and I just take it. And when we at the club and people fainting and people looking at us different and people like our music don't know it's us. I like, got a skull and say lunatics. And we ain't, and you're on the radio spending more than Biggie and Pop. And you don't know it's me, and you my best friend. Right. And you went to school with me, and you like, I like that song. But if I tell you it's me, you kind of like, man, whatever. You know what I'm saying? That let me know that our music is good. It's not about us being popular. It's about our music being good. It needs us being popular. Right on. So I kind of knew it early, and I, I kind of saw it. But uh, my grandma didn't see it until she got uh, until she seen the song Jay Leno. I don't care how many checks you gave her. Right on. <laughs> a check. No, you need to go to school. You was on Jay Leno? Oh, y'all made it. <laughs> So with that, let me, let me ask you this, because uh, listen, I don't know nothing about being on a platinum album. Country Grammar, when I was a couple years back, okay, I remember bumping that all summer. One of the hottest records that I can remember, even till today. Talk, tell me about what was the, the creative atmosphere when y'all was putting together Country Grammar? It was, see back, see right now the mecca of hip hop is based around Atlanta. But right then when we was on Mace, uh, Jay Z was just cracking right then, you know, and it was like New York, New York, New York, New York. So we went up to New York to record, right. you know what I'm saying? And it was like the, just the light. I mean, you just at that time, like in Atlanta right now, you can go down the street or go to the mall or something, you are gonna see somebody right. flat out. And that's how New York was. I can go to Popeyes right now and see Method Man chilling. I'm gonna see Red Man walking up a bus call. Somebody gonna be walking down yonder. Yeah. Right. See Buster Rhymes gonna come up walking out of the studio somewhere up the street. You know what I'm saying? So it was like that atmosphere was was amazing to us. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was something that we looked at at all at all times, looking for. That's what we was thinking New York was. Right. Everything we said it was, it was at that time. You know what I'm saying? So being in there, it was probably like what we came up like maybe six, seven deep. You know, and, but we was with like four or five people that was from New York, New York, and I. Right. So we, they down, they they going crazy because we from down south, so they taking our language and doing that, and then we taking on stuff that they doing, and you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah just adjusting to that whole situation was just we already just country. the whole motivation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We already talking different and saying new words, so we figured we could say different words in a different way, or. Say the words that you use in a different way, then we kind of meet you halfway. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, we use the word like rappers. Like rappers was a watch, but it was more based out of New York. You know what I'm saying? Right. We use it because we was around New York people sometimes, and they'd go back and use our words, and it was like a big mix between that. You know what I'm saying? Right. But just imagine waking up every day like we used to drive everywhere we go in St. Louis. Like in New York, we was ten blocks down the street, and we walked every day through Times Square from the studio every day at noon. Right. So it's eight of us walking down the street, just walking. Boom, get to the studio. Knock off a song and a half. We got the hook, we got a song, we got a hook. We go back to the, to the um, hotel at two in the morning, finish up what we gonna do, write to what we write to, get up in the morning, we already ready. We were right. all business. It was like, to us it was business. Right. I mean, to them it was business, to us it was just work ethic. Right. You know what I'm saying? We had a big work ethic before we got our chance and it helped. Right. You know what I'm saying? They thought we was going to take a month and a half to finish an album. We was finished with eight songs in a week. Right. Easy, though. On slow, like, oh, we can chill today. Right. Let's go shopping. You know what I'm saying? Like, because we just knew, we didn't know what, what it meant to us to have our own studio and to be able to do six songs a day, six songs a day. He still do two songs a day right now. Right on. You know what I'm saying? I understand why Pac got so many songs after he died. Because, oh, if you do, if you do a song, if you got work ethic, you got that many songs. Right. You know what I'm saying? It only takes eight or eight or nine, eight to eight to ten to fill out an album. So he got eighty songs right now that he done did in the last three months. Just putting that work. Like that putting that work. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, all, it, all it does is teach you work ethic and that's more important than a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? Right on. Now, switching directions on y'all. Y'all brought another member of the team down here with y'all today. Seven Lee, is that correct? Is she is she's in the building. Yeah. You know, that's good. Hard. So bring her on. You ready to bring her on in? Bring her on in. You, you can take my take my spot. Take. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> now you are in here. Please introduce yourself. My name is Seven Lee, and um, born and raised in Madrid, Spain. Oh, born in Madrid, Spain, and I now reside in St. Louis, Missouri, and that's where I. 
that my family here. Right on. So your style of music. What do you what do you what do you bring to the team? What are you doing? Um, actually, um, I'm just grinding right now. Just uh, I'm a songwriter, actress. Um, I actually host my own web talk show called Seven at Seven, and um, my style of music. Um, I really don't have a label for it. Um, I'm allowing my fans to kind of choose. You know, it's just kind of a, a melting pot. Uh, I was born um, and raised in, in the church. And uh, it definitely has a lot of gospel-inspired uh, um, style. Um, also, some R&B, some pop, a little bit of hip hop. Um, so it's just kind of like a little mix, a little melting pot. And it just kind of reflects my life. Wow. So my parents are, I'm a military brat, so my parents lived all over. I've lived all over. So I've been inspired by different cultures and different type of people. So my music kind of reflects that. So it's kind of a mystery. Um, I know it's kind of going against the grain of what the industry usually um, looks for in artists because I can't really put a label on me. And I like to live outside the box. And I don't want somebody says I can't do something, I always try to go you know, to another level. So I, I just do that in my writing. Um, I go from one end of being inspirational to you know, saying it's OK to be beautiful and sexy and all that stuff. Right. You know, just, I know. Yeah. Look at you, girl, all exotic, <laughs> doing your thing, but I like that, I like that. I asked, I asked your family before you got here, I asked, so now I want to ask you, Okay. when you sit down, when you, your passion for music, what is it, where does that come from? What led you to want to be in this industry? Um, actually, I just, I always loved entertaining. I remember seeing Whitney Houston, um, seeing I Want to Dance with Somebody, and seeing that video when it came out, and, you know, I would just, you know, <laughs> throw a towel over my head and grab a, a <laughs> Um, a mop or a broom and I just sang and I danced in uh, my church um, in Omaha, Nebraska where I lived once. Uh, we used to put on stage plays, productions and I just love that. I loved entertainment and of course my daddy sang, he's a musician and my sisters we sang um, as a little gospel group when I was younger so it just was, it's always been in me. My whole family sings, you know, so I just really am um, inspired to sing. It's just in me um, and then I, I as I got older, I knew I could actually put an engine behind my talent and my gift and actually uh, inspire other people you know, out there just that may not be able to sing, but want right. to hear the lyrics and the words. So I, I always have a message right. that I want to bring with my music. Excellent. I like that answer. Let me, let me ask you guys this. You can answer it individually, collectively, however you want to. You guys are all artists. You're all out. So let me ask you, what's more important to you? Is it more important for you at the end of the day to sell a tremendous amount of records, or is it more important for you at the end of the day for the world to remember you and say, you know what, that person was an artist, that person painted a picture for me, and say, you never sell another record. What would be the ideal situation? Uh, I'm in the business to sell records. Um, I definitely, I always cared about what people think about me when I was younger, you know what I'm saying, but as I got older and realized that everything ain't about you, um, I don't know if I, I ain't that guy that the leader. I want to leave my fifth prints in the sand, or they gonna know what's going on. You know right. what I'm saying? I just want, I just want to do good music. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully, it touches a few people. You know what I'm saying? To to make them want to either do what I do, or or it gets them through their day. I know when I when I was getting through high school, Goody Mob, I couldn't take it out. You know what I'm saying? They second album, Family Tree or whatever. Well, I couldn't take it out. I couldn't take out the Biggie album. I couldn't take out the Outkast album, and that inspired me. You know, so that's why. That's if, if anything, that's that's what I would want as far as music. You know, what I mean, just to, just to know I got you through your day. Sometimes, you know, when I wake up on Twitter and see some of my fans, and they like, I'm in my workout. I'm bumping my back. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like that that that's that's more of a of a leaving that I would rather. You know what I'm saying? But when when I'm gone, you ain't you ain't got to. Gotta mention my name like that. I ain't, I ain't too fond of that, but definitely as long as my kids know what's going on. Right on. You say you ain't Neil Armstrong. You ain't worried about trying to put the flag. Nah, 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 nah. I love this, and I just gonna I'm gonna keep doing it till I till I can't no more, and, and hopefully I can get you, get you through your day. Sometimes I got two flags in my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm different. I want both. I want 300 million to know that I'm here. So you know what I'm saying? Like. I, I need both. Right on. You know what I'm saying? I need both. Like, I'm in it for a business, so I definitely need the other side. And as far as artistry, it's cool. I mean, respect is respect by one respect by one is important person is better than barbershop respect. So, yeah, 
So right. you gotta watch what you where you getting your respect level from too. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, my kids respected them cool. You know what I'm saying? Or he respected I'm cool. Them twenty thousand people over there that don't know nothing and ain't gonna buy nothing no way. Right. Don't listen to that. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's they gonna do, they gonna do their thing, you know what I'm saying? But don't forget they are as far as the marketer goes, they are it's some type of importance also. So if you can make a change and can make them happy in a certain manner that's not gonna take nothing from you, then know that they are important too. You know what I'm saying? The people that don't like you are important too. You know what I'm saying? To a certain statue, you know what I'm saying? Don't jump off the river, jump off the bridge for it though. I don't feel good. Well for me, um, I guess I have to pull from both of them. I mean, you can't do one without the other. Because um, I can do music, um, but I do believe in, I believe in leaving something um, for the people coming up behind. I, I want to, I know that the people that have gone on, the grace that have passed, we've recently lost. They have been a great inspiration to me and they will never be replaced. And that's what I hope I'm able to do for another young lady or young man that is, you know, looking to be an entertainer or get into the same field or even have a different, you know, um, Job, job occupation, just to know that they can do it and leave a mark. And I would love to leave a mark. But at the same time, I'm a businesswoman, so I like my money. I like to go shopping. No so way. it has to be both. You, you know, because it's a living, you have to make a living at it. You gotta make money to, you know, be successful as well. Right. You know? But my main thing at the end of the day, the money could be gone, and if I don't have my music, I would. I don't know what I do. You know, I kind of put my music. <laughs> I have to kind of come out of it because I'm a workaholic. I love, I love it. And it's a, a passion. Times, a lot of times, your mark doesn't even come from music. Music just led you to an opportunity to do other things in the community. That's going to be your mark. Like people don't get named after a school because you sold twenty million records. Right. You get named after school because you put in a community work where you put in something else. You gave back and you did those things. That's what you get. You know what I'm saying? Matt Johnson's gonna get an imprint not for throwing passes, but for doing things you're doing now. You know what I'm saying? That's oh. So that's what it's about too. Music is to lead you to opportunities. You know what I'm saying? It'll lead us to our own wine, you know what I'm saying? Called Freaky Moscato. Um, you can go to drinkfreaky.com. Um, if you order four bottles or more to your doorstep, I'll pay for the ship. We also have our own, we also have our own air freshener called Airplay. You can go on Airplay, uh, that's country grammar, but A-I-R, Play. Um, fresh.com and what I'm refreshing it cuts out any bad smells, any smoke, anything that you um, find that disrupt your atmosphere. We um, we real fly, we real fresh, so everything got to be fresh, not just us, just our atmosphere. And everything. I, I like that. You know what I'm saying so it's music to your nose, so check it out, and it's cheaper than a warrant. <laughs> <laughs> before, before, I get you, before I get you guys out of here, because you guys got you're going over the battle ride, and you guys will be doing your thing. Um, I got young artists out there. One one piece of information that you would give to somebody that's coming up in the game today, just, just one one piece of advice. What you're doing right now that you think is so hard, that's the easy part. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Um, just stay focused and never give up. Um, you only got one life, but a thousand tries. So even though times get rough, or you know, people tell you, you can't just keep going. It's got to be something inside you that you know drives you, no matter what you're doing. So you know, just keep going, never give up. Um, anything you want to do takes time. So um, you want to be a doctor in seven years. You want to be this in this many years. You know what I'm saying? So um, no, it's not going to come like that. You got to put that college work in every subject, even if you're not going to college. You know what I'm saying? So. In other words, you need to Google and YouTube more than your Facebook and Twitter a little bit. You like to find out what you're getting into, find out how they did it, why they did it. Um, learn more than one thing. Learn how to make a beat too. Learn how to do things that can help you get to another level. Like Kanye, if you just went in rapping, he wouldn't know. Probably it would have been, I don't know what would happen. Right. But since I'm making beats, now I'm in there doing this, doing this, and doing this. Now I'm in the right place at the right time. Right. And I'm around people doing what I do. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta find your way, find out what somebody need. Everybody's always gonna say, it's too many rappers. Right. So if it's too many rappers, what do they need? Um, from beats to producers to light, light film people to cameraman. I know a lot of people behind the camera right now that rap better than the rapper. Hold on. But they do what they gotta do to get to where they gotta get to. And they don't have to count on anybody because they can turn the camera around and shoot their own video. That's all. Can I add something? Go ahead. 
Um, also, I don't know if you all mentioned it already, um, an organization that we're a part of, um, Nelly opened up the music school. So eibynelly.com, if you want to get in the industry, you know, it has everything that you could possibly need at the school. So Google and check them out. Um, I just thought that would be great for new and upcoming artists. Oh, I don't, that's excellent. I don't want to keep you guys in longer because I know y'all y'all hot and y'all getting ready to go do your thing. Um, anything that we need to plug, where to find you guys? You go to murphyleeucme.com. That's murphyleeucme.com. Uh, sevenleemusic.com. That's S-E-V-I-I-N-L-I music.com. Uh, on Twitter, Q-Y-S-T-L-K-Y-J-U-A-E-N. S-T-L. Awesome. You guys are awesome. And you can, and that is beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been CitystreetsMe.com. Here with Mr. Murphy Lee, Mr. Seven Lee, Mr. Kiwan. We are out of here. I get that voice while I leave. I'm leaving with you talk with that voice. <laughs> that voice right now. I'm going right now. I'm going up to my room right now. We're going to knock it down. That's right. Do whatever this man say because he got that. You ain't got that. You ain't got nothing. You got to stand out. You ain't doing nothing. Stand out. We're on orange head. <laughs> hey, y'all heard what the band said. <laughs> Catch them here in a little bit at Battle Rock. They're going to be doing their thing in beautiful city of Wichita. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks for having us, man. Thanks for having us. We got the new one. We are out of here. <laughs> 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 <laughs>